as Ukrainian soldiers fight back invading Russian forces. A mysterious fire destroys a weapons depot in eastern Bulgaria. The July 2022 incident was the latest in a string of suspicious explosions at Bulgarian arms facilities over the past decade. Russian agents have been linked to some of the blasts. And there are accusations Moscow is behind the near fatal poisonings of a Bulgarian arms dealer. But in a country politically divided by Russia's war in Ukraine, the cases remain open and officially unsolved. An RFERL investigation looks into allegations of cover-ups and foot-dragging by Bulgarian authorities. Тие саботажи ще продължат толкова дълго, докато нямаме, докато не се защитим. Amid the ruins of an ammunition depot near the eastern Bulgarian city of Karnobat, Konstantin Skelen is looking for answers. In the early morning of July 31st, 2022, a fire and a chain of explosions ripped through this warehouse belonging to the Bulgarian munitions manufacturer, Emco. Skellen is the company's logistics manager and says hot summer temperatures could not have triggered the blaze. Once the fire was put out, it was too dangerous to enter the depot to inspect the damage. Emco used a drone to survey the smoldering ruins and shared this footage with RFERL. The scorched trees and vegetation around the building revealed the intensity of the inferno. Alexander Hristov was a security guard on duty when the fire broke out. Richtoff knew he had to get out of the area fast and says it was a miracle no one was killed by the exploding shells. The owner of the Emco depot is Bulgarian arms dealer Emilian Gebrev. He told Britain's Guardian newspaper he was 100% sure that Russian operatives were behind the Karnobat fire, but later told RFERL that no direct evidence has emerged to confirm this. It's unclear if the Karnobat munitions were destined for Ukraine, but following Russia's full-scale invasion of the country, Gebrev told RFERL how proud he was of Bulgaria's arms industry, which is a major producer of ammunition for Soviet-era weapons, the kind widely used by the Ukrainian military. The industry in the years, and now, when this war is in the moment, 
доказва своето значение. Former Bulgarian Prime Minister Kirill Petkov has revealed his nation secretly provided an estimated third of the ammunition needed by Ukrainian forces in the early stages of Russia's invasion. After leaving office, Petkov told Germany's Die Welt newspaper he acted covertly through intermediaries who exported the weapons via third countries. The head of the Bulgarian Socialist Party had vowed to quit the ruling coalition if Sofia sent arms directly to Ukraine. As far back as 2014, Ukraine's army relied on Bulgarian ammunition as it battled Russia-backed separatists in the eastern Donbass region following Moscow's illegal annexation of Crimea. That's according to Viktor Yahun, a former deputy chairman of the Ukrainian security service, the SBU. When Ukraine came to war in 2014, and we started to надзвичайні проблеми з забезпеченням наших військ якісним артилерійським спорядженням. Тому найбільш перспективним ринком отримання цих боєприпасів була Болгарія. The 2022 destruction of the Karnobat Arms Depot was the latest in a string of suspicious fires and explosions at Bulgarian munitions facilities over the past decade. There have been at least 10 such incidents, including alleged sabotage at facilities belonging to Gebrev's company, Emco. The first occurred on November 12, 2011, near the village of Lovnidol. More than 3,000 long-range projectiles were stored at this warehouse. Prosecutors say ammunition and explosives destroyed in the Lovnidol blast were destined for Georgia, though EMCO denies its weapons there were bound for the South Caucasus nation. Georgia fought a brief war with Russia in 2008, and Moscow has recognized Georgia's breakaway regions of Abkhazia and South Ossetia. This guard, Zhivko Dimov, saw shells rain down over a 1.5 square kilometer area. Explosions lasted for several days. Miraculously, there were no casualties. It took more than six months to clean up the Lovnidol site and defuse the remaining shells. An investigation by authorities examined several possible explanations for the blast, from an insurance swindle and human error to technical malfunction. But those hypotheses were dismissed when evidence pointed to sabotage. Konstantin Skellen also managed the Lovnidol warehouse and says a Russian-made explosive device was found by investigators 150 meters from the building. In 2013, Bulgarian authorities suspended the investigation into the Lovnidol blast because no suspect could be identified. Six months after that incident, several arms warehouses were destroyed by massive explosions near the eastern Bulgarian town of Stralja. Mitko Karakolev still works for the company, but at the trading, and is haunted by what happened here. On June 5, 2012, three people were killed by exploding munitions, 
including Karakolev's former colleague, whom he'd known since childhood. Karakolev, however, did manage to rescue another colleague, who was wounded and trapped in a burning building. He risked his life after getting a desperate phone call. The explosions were so powerful, many locals mistook them for an earthquake. More than 600 people in nearby villages were evacuated. Atanas Balakchev was at a nearby cottage retreat called Lilac Hut and will never forget what he saw. The initial investigation said the disaster was sparked by workers who were disassembling a Davina rocket warhead. Ivan Mitev, the head of Stralja's local council, believes the owner was negligent. Desislav Delev is the owner of Beretta Trading and the Stralja Depot. He was charged with negligence but acquitted in an initial trial. Prosecutors filed new charges, but more than 10 years after the deadly incident, there's still been no final verdict. Delev says prosecutors failed to investigate the possibility of sabotage. On the day of the explosions, Delev says a repair crew visited the facility to fix a broken security camera. He says the depot was housing arms destined for Georgia on behalf of Sage Consultants, a company blacklisted by Russia. Case materials show the firm was storing $28 million worth of weapons at the site. And leaked permits published by the Bulgarian investigative site BIRD show Sage was authorized to export weapons to Georgia. One of the permits was issued two months before the blasts. A forensics report from Delev's first trial noted evidence of explosive fire in each of the five warehouses Sage Consultants was using at the site. But the protective earth barriers around each warehouse were virtually undamaged. Delev said such destruction would be impossible if the incident had been triggered from a single location. По принцип тези бази се изграждат така, че да не допускат да се да има детониращ ефект между складовете. Фактически за да стане това нещо трябва да бъдат разрушени валовете, които се изграждат специално около всеки склад. При нас няма никакво нарушение на валовете, никакво обгаряне, а всъщност всички складове са взривени. И това по чиста елементарна логика води, че има някаква намеса, която за да се защото всичко погина. In 2014, there were four more explosions at Bulgarian munitions facilities. On February 28th of that year, an explosion at the Arsenal Weapons Complex in Kazanlak killed one person. On August 8th, 
10 people were injured in a series of explosions at the Teremzar Samuel military plant in Kostanets. On October 1st, 15 people were killed at the Midjur plant in Gornilom, the deadliest incident to hit a Bulgarian munitions facility. Finally, on December 19, 2014, an unexplained explosion at an ammunition company in Maglij killed one person. The 2014 blasts came amid a period of higher tension in Eastern Europe, sparked by Russia's annexation of Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula. The Ukrainian army was also scrambling to get ammunition and weapons as it battled Russia-backed separatists in Ukraine's eastern Donbass region. On the evening of March 21, 2015, news reports showed the state VMZ arms factory in central Bulgaria in flames. The skies above the Vazov machine building plant were fiery shades of orange and could be seen from the nearby town of Karlovo. Three weeks later, on April 14th, Karlovo, Iganovo and Sopot were again rattled by blasts at the same plant, despite stepped-up security. Munitions at the VMZ depot were reportedly to be sent to Ukraine through intermediary nations like Poland and the Czech Republic. An investigation was launched into the VMZ blasts, but it would take six years for Bulgarian authorities to reveal alleged Russian involvement and that evidence in the case had been destroyed in a mysterious fire. Two weeks after the second explosion at the VMZ munitions plant, Emelian Gebrev, the Bulgarian arms dealer, was the target of an alleged poison attack. On April 28, 2015, Gebrev fell into a coma after an unidentified phosphorus organic substance was allegedly placed on his car door handle in the Sofia garage by a Russian agent. That was according to Bulgarian prosecutors, who released this surveillance video in 2020. But initially, state investigators blamed the near-fatal illness on an arugula salad contaminated with pesticide, an explanation Gebrev called an attempted cover-up. И в момента има хора, които са на служба в Държавната агенция по национална сигурност, които и до ден днешен твърдат, че въобще изобщо не е имало трябване, не е имало терористичен знак, нищо не се е случвало. Та дори и самия главен прокурор беше започнал да говори за някакви руколи и други смешни твърдения. After making little headway in the investigation for three years, Bulgarian authorities got a tip off from British investigators. They linked Gebrev's 2015 sickness to a suspect in the Novichok poison attack on former Russian spy Sergei Skripal in Salisbury, England, allegedly carried out by Russian GRU military agents. Bulgarian prosecutors had to publicly acknowledge that something more sinister had occurred to Gebrev. They just were forced to be a strong factor to do it and to do it с изключително голямо нежелание. По никакъв начин не се обръщат за съдействие от специализираната международна организация за защита от химическите оръжия. Прокуратурата прави всичко възможно това да не се случи. In 2020, Denis Sergeyev and Yegor Gordienko, 
were among three Russians charged in absentia by Bulgaria for their alleged role in trying to poison Gebrev. The open source investigation organization Bellingcat reported the men were part of Unit 29155, the GRU Russian intelligence team linked to the Skripal Novichok poisoning. In April 2021, the Czech government accused Moscow of state terrorism and linked Russian agents from the same GRU unit to a deadly explosion at an ammunition depot five years earlier. The 2014 blast in the Czech town of Verbitice killed two people and set off 50 metric tons of ammunition, some of which belonged to Emilian Gebrev. Ні, ну була така інформація, що ця зброя частково була передначена для України. Що в основному чому? Тому що ті калібри, які там зберігалися, вони точно явно не призначалися для Чехії. Gebrev denied that the destroyed ammunition was intended for export. But again, external events forced Bulgarian authorities to reopen investigations into unexplained blasts in their own country. The Russian GRU team allegedly behind the Czech explosion was linked to unexplained arms depot blasts in Bulgaria. In April 2021, the spokeswoman for Bulgaria's prosecutor general announced that six suspected Russian agents were being investigated. She said they were in Bulgaria in the spring of 2015, around the time of Gebrev's poisoning and the explosions at the VMZ ammunition plant. Prosecutors revealed something else. Physical evidence concerning the blasts at the VMZ plant was destroyed in a fire at an interior ministry facility in Sofia on May 31, 2015. Initial news reports said the fire broke out in the late afternoon, possibly due to a short circuit and that no one had been hurt. But at the April 2021 press conference, prosecutors directly linked the fire to possible Russian involvement, suggesting it had been intentionally triggered. Bellingcat cited travel records as showing that two of the Russian agents charged in Gebrev's poisoning left Bulgaria days before the fire. Bulgaria's Prosecutor General's office hasn't made any more details public about its investigation since the 2021 press conference. The Kremlin has denied any involvement in the Bulgarian and Czech incidents. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov dismissed Bulgaria's allegations. Либо болгарская сторона ничего не ведала, и только вдруг сейчас, после того, как в Чехии спохватились про события 2014 года, решила перещеголять еще и Чех и заглянуть гораздо глубже в историческую ретроспективу. Либо они все это время знали, что происходило, но по каким-то причинам не придавали это гласности. Questions over the Bulgarian authorities' years of silence and lack of transparency about the ongoing investigation have also been raised by some of the country's lawmakers. I think that it is important to have a clear attention. At the moment, the prosecutor will say where they have reached, because these investigations can only continue for years. Martin Dimitrov is a former member of parliament with the pro-European Democratic Bulgaria Alliance. Много се опасявам, но обръщам внимание на всички, че това е национална сигурност. А че ние ако допускаме да влизат лица в България, да участват в потомни саботажи а и след това да няма наказателни мерки от страна на българската държава, тия саботажи ще продължат толкова дълго, докато няма мерки, докато не се защитим. Димитров, along with former Bulgarian defense minister Vilizar Shalamanov, called for a special parliamentary committee to oversee the probes by the Prosecutor General's office into the unexplained blasts and investigate alleged cover-ups by the security services. If we are in the sense that there are people who are not with the proven integrity, who have a certain weakness, which is more in the support of the foreign interests than the interests of Bulgaria, there are also accusations that Bulgaria's Prosecutor General Ivan Geshev 
and his predecessor, Sotil Tsatsarov, actively tried to stall the investigations into Russian sabotage. Boyko Noev is another former Bulgarian defense minister. He says while Britain had hundreds of people investigating the Novichok poisoning of former Russian spy Sergei Skripal, Bulgaria had only one or two investigators working on Gebrev's poisoning case. Gebrev claims that on multiple occasions, Bulgarian authorities refused to cooperate with partner nations investigating Russia's GRU agents who were allegedly behind his poisoning. Има обосновано предположение, че нам най-малко три или четири пъти българска страна е отказала на свой партньор да съдейства. Още повече, че случаи да се припокриват. Това е доста показателно като цяло. Noev says he was concerned about a 2017 cooperation deal between Bulgaria's prosecutor general and his Russian counterpart. Затварям скобата. Този влиянието на Русия върху нашите органи и прокуратурата в частност е без съмнено. Няма съмнение. Russia's war in Ukraine has divided some Bulgarians. Those who support Kyiv have clashed with a vocal minority who back the Kremlin. Bulgaria is considered one of the most pro-Russian nations in the European Union due to close historical, cultural, and business ties. While some Bulgarians have supported Ukraine, polls show a majority want their country to take a neutral position on the war. The far-right pro-Russian Vazrajdane, or Revival Party, removed a Ukrainian flag from Sofia City Hall and has held rallies sympathizing with Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Pro-Russian parties saw their support grow in October 2022 parliamentary elections. A coalition government failed to emerge from the October election meaning Bulgaria will hold another vote in the spring, its fifth parliamentary election in two years. In 2021, amid this political instability, Stefan Yanev served as a caretaker prime minister and was later Bulgaria's defense minister when the war started. He was sacked in March 2022 for refusing to call Russia's invasion of Ukraine a war insisting instead on calling it a special military operation, the term used by the Kremlin. Виждаме какви са неговите интереси, какви са неговите приоритети, по-скоро в подкрепа на на Русия и на президента Путин отколкото на българските интереси. А също така виждаме че определено и МВР и то не само по отношение на взривовете, ние имаме друг голям проблем, това са паравоенните формирования и всякакви практически проруски инициативи, които поставят руското знаме над българското и руския интерес над българския. The Kremlin has put Bellingcat's Bulgarian-born investigative journalist Kristo Grozev on a wanted list, and some pro-Russian Bulgarian politicians were eager to see him be extradited. Grozev told a parliamentary hearing in January that Bulgarian authorities were withholding evidence of sabotage on their nation's arms depots by Russian agents with the GRU unit 29155. <laughs> Stay, 
а, по подобни действия и практически прекива присъствието и участието на ГРУ в българските зрилове. Using Bulgaria's Freedom of Information Laws, RFERL requested details about the blast investigations from Bulgaria's Council of Ministers and the State Agency for National Security. Both requests were denied. But in January, Bulgarian Prosecutor General Ivan Geshev dismissed accusations of cover-ups and said his office always cooperated with partner nations. Това, което мога да кажа, че по случая с взривовете имахме много добра комуникация с колегите от Чехия. Аз изключително говорих по телефона по този случай с предишния чешки главен прокурор и вярвайте ми цялата информация, която може да е полезна и на чешката страна и на българската е разменена коректно. RFERL asked Geshev about developments in the investigation of the string of explosions at Bulgarian arms facilities. He said six Russians had already been charged in connection with the blasts. Това дело, което вече на закрита специализирана прокуратура, бяха привлечени шест руски граждани, които вероятно са свързани като виняеми държа и обявени за издиране, най-вероятно които са свързани с руските служби за сигурност. It was the first public statement by Bulgarian prosecutors indicating that the alleged Russian agents had been formally charged in connection with the blasts. As the first anniversary of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine approached, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky stepped up diplomatic efforts to secure more weapons from European allies. On February 9th, he met with EU leaders in Brussels. But Bulgaria's president questioned the obligation of the interim government he appointed to provide direct military aid to Ukraine. Rumen Radev said the new government that emerges from Bulgaria's spring elections should reconsider. Надявам се, че правителството ще прояви разум за в бъдеще това да не се допуска. But the longer the conflict drags on, the more Ukraine will be in need of deliveries of Bulgarian-made ammunition. Постръл. And the more Russia will want to stop it. Със войната в Украина рисковете от такова естество за България, за българските граждани, за българската индустрия нарастват. Back amid the ruins of the Emco warehouse near Karnobat, Konstantin Skelin says he knows nothing about the investigation into the devastating fire here. Не ни изнестяват, може би имат някакви допускания, може и да нямат, може и да продължават да се работи, но аз това не мога да го кажа. Skelin says if someone did try to break into the building, the security system should have caught it. Системата е така изградена, че всеко едно нарушение се регистрира чрез а, а, принтер и това нещо се отпечатва. Разбира се, цялата компоновка на софтуер и, и хардвер на това, което го имаме към алармата си, ни беше иззето от разследващите органи и до момента аз поне нямам информация какво има на тях записано. With no answers as to what caused the inferno in Karnobat in July 2022, questions about the security of Bulgaria's munition stocks still linger. Kyiv, meanwhile, continues to plead with its European allies to keep ammunition supplies flowing as Russia's war in Ukraine enters a second year. <laughs>